Hello right back, it's Jay Plays Games. Welcome to Portal Knights. It's finally launched. I have spent over a week or so of playing this fantastic game and I'm really enjoying it. So I thought I'd give you some tips, guides, little hints about what I found really useful. Some of them be pretty basic, some of them might be really simple, but it's easy to miss even in a game like this. Others you may never have heard about. So hopefully this will help you. Stay tuned, let's get on it. Here's some guides and tips from playing Portal Knights. Characters and universes work exactly like Terraria. You can create different characters and you can load up the same world. So if you've got somewhere, say, with um, one character and you want to try something different but you don't want to have to grind and get all your items, go ahead and craft a brand new character. You can see here I've got my next one, Xena, level 1 warrior, and we're going to load up the same universe, the Ratbags universe here. All the worlds that you've previously unlocked with your other character will be available to you, so the only thing you've got to do is work on your experience. It's really good if you've really got bored of playing with the same class, and it gives you a big head start. Your, all your items are there, your workbenches, your crafting benches, it just makes everything so much easier. The other flip side of that is you can take your old character and start a brand new universe. Maybe you want to start on a smaller map or a larger map, maybe you want the worlds to have no more blocks on it or anything you've built on it, you can go back and actually start a brand new universe with your highly experienced character. So you don't have to worry about getting all that XP or unlocking stuff again, you can do it straight away on a brand new world with your old character. Don't forget the worlds are procedurally generated as well, so don't worry if you're playing on someone else's or you're watching a video let's play and you can't find that mine that you see in the video, each world is procedurally generated. It'll have the same sort of stuff in it, like the same mine, the same sort of houses, but they'll be in different locations. When you load up the game you'll see a daily event these events are really good for xp so always try and complete them you can get loads of good stuff and you can get some unique features have a look on the world map and you can see what one it entails some of them mean you need to collect certain resources from enemies others mean you just need to actually kill certain enemies this one here i'm defeating five mana spores five lava spores and five poison spores do this and you receive some rewards xp gold coins and some special items like I said. This is what I got by doing this event. I got this really unique pet, the Poison Spore. You can literally have a little glue of poison following you around in the game. Don't forget to read all the information about the worlds before you visit them. It can make life a lot easier so you're not fruitlessly searching for certain resources. You're going to meet a lot of NPCs in the game. Some are traders, some are just there to say hello to, and others will give you quests. Remember where the quest givers and the traders are. It can be very easy to get mixed up, and the game doesn't actually really keep track. It doesn't say on the world options what NPCs are on what world. So you have to go a bit old school and write down exactly where that trader is. Lots of the traders are really useful, they sell specific items, so you really do need to keep track of it to make life a lot easier. However, some of the NPCs are really, really not that great. They only sell certain things, and some of the stuff they sell is pretty basic that you can go and just gather for yourself. As you can see by the price of it, it's relatively cheap for some of this. But who knows, maybe you want to spruce up your world, make it look a bit better, or you're just super, super lazy and you can't be bothered gathering certain resources. You can, of course, sell all your items to these traders. Lots of the items will get you lots of gold, but again, you don't get much unless it's a particularly special item. But sharpening stones is something I was getting loads of, so I made sure I got rid of them as soon as possible. And because the worlds are procedurally generated, the NPCs are always going to be in different spots. You will find the same NPCs on every single world, it's specifically the traders and the quest givers, but they will be in different locations. So if you really need to, check out a wiki, make sure it's got that trader on it, and then just keep searching, searching until you find it. Quest givers can be really useful, some of them only give you certain items which are a bit basic but other ones give you loads of really good stuff and you get a fair amount of XP from every time you do one of these quests and lots of them are fairly simple. As soon as you get the resources needed, craft as many of the crafting benches and stations as possible. It opens up so many more items that you can craft and whenever you get the chance, upgrade them. They will need certain resources you won't have early on in game but certainly as soon as you can it's definitely worth doing every single one. Even the stuff that's specific to a certain class. So the archery bench is mostly for obviously archers, the anvil is mostly for warriors and the altar is mostly for magicians but it doesn't stop you from crafting certain items that could be useful. 
And speaking of useful items, early on get the arcane compass as soon as possible. It's really useful for helping you find portals. It costs mana to use, but you can see here it highlights different portals. So whatever portal it is, whether it's a blue one or yellow one or red one or green one, it will show exactly where the direction is. As you get closer, you can see it gets even bigger, so you know exactly where you are. After that, you've just got to dig down if they're underground, which most of them are, and then you will definitely find your portal. It's not always exactly specific, it's just in that area, but you will find it like I found this one right here. You probably want to go building a base straight away, but I would say hold off, wait until you can unlock some of these other tools. You'll get resources a lot quicker and a lot better if you can wait and get some of this stuff. Particularly the lumberjack axe, the copper pickaxe and the mining drill. It makes gathering resources for building so much easier. You unlock attribute points and talents as you progress through the game. Don't forget to apply these. I totally forgot this and I had 16 points before I realised I could help myself with better skills and better talents. You can then choose between what specialisations you want and it really helps out. If you're a warrior you might want to put more points into constitution and strength. This means you'll be able to face off against enemies close quarters and be able to take quite a few hits. If you're a ranger class you might want a bit more in agility and dexterity so you can run around and attack enemies from range. And if you're a mage you probably want a little bit more in wisdom and intelligence. This will make spell casting a lot easier and not as expensive on your mana. Of course you can do what you want and put the points exactly where you want. Maybe you're a ranger who likes using knives then that means you probably will be close up to enemies so you would want a bit more points in constitution and strength or maybe you're a mage that wants to use close up encounters using your sky. so again you might put points in it. Play around with it, have a little muck around but like I said generally these are the points associated with each class. With the talents as well, make sure you mix and match as you play the game. You might have put your specialisation in bows, but then decided you want to use your sling. So make sure you put the actual buff, the talent, onto the actual sling specialisation. It's easy to forget some of these, especially as you get right into the game, but they unlock at each levels of 2, 5, 10, 15, etc. Meaning you're going to have even more talents to use, so definitely mix it up. If you've got a particular boss you're finding really hard, check to see if some of your talents will give you the upper hand. There's over 47 worlds to explore in Portal Knights and quite a few bosses. You might want to get to the bosses a lot quicker, so plan and map out exactly how you're going to do that. Lots of the worlds will have two portals, so each portal will take you to a different direction or a different world. So really plan it ahead. Remember to use your arcane compass to find out exactly where the portals are on each world. And don't forget you can get information about how many portals are on each world by taking a look at the island details by pressing the A button or the X button. But just because you can get to the bosses quicker doesn't mean you should. The bosses are really hard, you've really got to be prepared making sure you've got enough skills and talents to actually fight and take on the boss. Or at least have lots of resources so you can defeat them. You may need to go and visit other worlds to get certain resources or just get a bit more experience before taking them on. But if you're fairly confident you can really skip one or two worlds on the way to the bosses so you can get there even quicker. Some of the armours are only class specific so you can only wear it if you're a mage, a ranger or a warrior. But as soon as you unlock the anvil and the actual crafting bench too you'll be able to unlock and make a lot more armour. There's a huge amount of choice and you can wear any type of com armor combination. These ones can be worn by any class, you don't have to be a mage, a warrior or a ranger to wear these, you can be whatever one you want. So go crazy, mix and match, see what suits your playstyle more, really take a look at what buffs it gives you or what damage multiplies it does. The same goes for weapons too, once you unlock Anvil 2 you'll be able to craft a lot more choice in weapons and you get bonus recipes from defeating bosses. When you get a new recipe, make sure you read it straight away, then that will save a lot of space in your inventory. After that you may get duplications or the same recipe, they're pretty much useless, you might only get like one gold coin from them if you can sell them to a trader, that's their only use. Make sure you're utilising your mana as well, even if you're not a mage class, you can still use spells. It's under the skills section, you just need to craft one of these and it will always be in your inventory. Then you can decide when to use it. Obviously it will use your mana, so that's why you're going to need all them potions even if you're not an actual mage. 
They can be quite expensive to make, but once you've unlocked it, that's it, you keep it forever. It's definitely worth doing to give your combat a little bit of a boost. So there you go guys, that is my first tips and guide done for Portal Knights. I'll be back with some more advanced stuff as I progress more through the game, but I just wanted to give you my first sort of impressions and first little guides about what I think is useful in the game. I'm really enjoying the game, I really think it's a cool game, and I definitely want to do more coverage on it, so expect more Let's Plays and more tutorial videos. If you want to see more Portal Knights, make sure you hit up this video with a like, share it, comment on it, tell me other tips that you've found so I can put them in the next video, and I'll give you a shout out too. I'm Jay Plays Games. This has been Portal Knights. I'll see you later. Bye bye.